Good morning. Today, I'm going to talk about economic corridor development, putting the concept into action. With a specific case of Vishakhapatnam Chennai Industrial Corridor Development Program. I would like to begin with a little story about myself. I come from a small town called Bikaner in Rajasthan, India. This is in the middle of the Thar Desert on India-Pakistan border. When I was growing up in this small town Bikaner in late 80s, my biggest concern was to find a decent job after graduation. I was one of the lucky few who was able to get a government job, perhaps the only major source of employment at that time, and also the most coveted one. Many of my friends remained unemployed. Years later, while working in the government, I became an employer myself. I can recollect an incident where we advertised a position of an unskilled support staff, an office helper. We were surprised to receive more than 10,000 applications for that position. The situation was so bad at that time in late 80s. Many of them were postgraduates, some of them even doctorates. Unfortunately, the situation has not changed much since then. In fact, it has only aggravated in 2015. India is a young country. Half its population is less than 25 years. Two thirds of its population is less than 35 years. It's supposed to have demographic dividend. But the threat is the young population of the country might become a demographic burden. Why? The reason is India has a huge labor force of 530 million. And it's growing at an alarming rate of 12 million a year. The biggest challenge before the country is to find well-paying jobs for such a huge labor force. The second biggest challenge before the country is to bridge the major infrastructure deficit and the corresponding financing requirements. As per the recent study undertaken by ERCD in ADB, India needs $4.5 trillion over a period of next 15 years. This translates to almost $300 billion every year. To put things in perspective, ADB invests about $2 billion a year in India. India has witnessed a major structural transformation and a strong economic growth over the last two decades since 1991. India's growth success story has been scripted by services, whose contribution to GDP has increased from a low level of 30% in 50s to more than 40% in 90s, and now it stands at 55%. Manufacturing, which has higher untapped potential, has lagged behind, with its contribution of about 15% to GDP and 12% to employment. In contrast, countries like China, Vietnam, and Malaysia have manufacturing sector contributing to their respective GDPs to the tune of more than 25%. Agriculture, as is the case in most similarly situated countries in Asia, has limited prospects for economic growth or job creation. India has now woken up to the challenge. Its manufacturing policy and Make in India campaign call for increasing the share of manufacturing from a low level of 15% to a high level of 25%. This will entail creating additional 100 million jobs in the country. It's a tall order, quite ambitious and pretty challenging. India is also following an Act East policy. This policy calls for strategic alliances, economic and diplomatic engagement with countries across Asia. India has adopted an economic development, corridor development approach since last uh, five years. In the budget of 2014, the government of India announced five different corridors, which I call Diamond Pentagon. This Diamond Pentagon of corridors connects five biggest cities in the country. In the west, we have Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. In the south, we have Chennai Bangalore Industrial Corridor, Bangalore Mumbai economic corridor, and in the north, we have Delhi-Kolkata Industrial Corridor. They are supported by different development partners. ADB is working on East Coast, uh, 
this is where we are working. 2,500 kilometers from Kolkata to Tutikorin in south. Vishakhapatnam Chennai Industrial Corridor, which is 800 kilometers, runs from Vishakhapatnam to Chennai, the middle third of the ECEC. This is part of a conscious regional cooperation strategy where both India and ADB want to link the country with GMS and Southeast Asia through corridors like BCIM, which is Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar, North South GMS corridor and trilateral highway. The dream is to connect Delhi to probably Singapore through a train maybe in next two decades. A transport corridor is simply a transit between two places. An economic corridor on the other hand is much wider in its scope. It has an efficient multimodal transport network. It is supported by quality infrastructure, logistics, distribution networks, and adequate services like water, power, land, and skilled workforce. It's in a defined geography, a cluster or a node or a corridor approach in a limited width of the corridor, which is usually 50 to 75 kilometers from both sides of the main trunk line, like a national highway or a railway line. Before we go on to the specific details of the project, let's watch a short video about the initiatives which the government of Andhra Pradesh is taking on economic corridor development. Welcome to Andhra Pradesh. A state with a strong economy, a bustling industrial scene, and an enabling business environment. While the driving force on this journey may be the incredible tourism experience that integrates the magic of the most picturesque and natural locales with the buzz of world-class smart cities, it is our vast network of educational and learning centers that will act as a true differentiator. While the highlights of this journey will be India's second largest coastline with modern ports having state-of-the-art infrastructure, with rail and road connectivity, airports and logistics hubs making up a network of convenience and metro rails poised to change traffic patterns. It is the planned cluster-based development of the state that will see it emerge as a logistics hub, as the LNG gateway to India, with a fully integrated inland waterway transport system, with smart urban infrastructure designed to keep pace with development and with industrial corridors that pave the way to the future. Yes, the roadmap has been laid. The journey has begun. We are forging ahead and we are looking for fellow travelers. And you are a special invitee. So welcome back after that interesting video. With support from ADB, the government of Andhra Pradesh has prepared a conceptual development plan, a regional perspective plan, and a master plan. These plans have several components. Number one is an infrastructure strategy to drive manufacturing and stimulate economic growth. Number two, identification of four high potential industrial nodes, which are Vishakhapatnam, Vishakhapatnam, Kakinada, Amravati, and Tirupati. These are the four nodes which have been identified as part of the analytical work done by ADB and the government. In each node, key industries and sectors have been identified for investments and infrastructure development. Finally, investment plan both in public sector for infrastructure investments and in private sector for manufacturing through private sector have been detailed out. This is done in an overall overarching policy framework. 
I would like to give an example of a sunrise sector pharmaceutical in the state. Andhra Pradesh has more than 200 units with investments of more than 1 billion in pharma sector. Uh, sector. This sector has seen growth rates of around 15% in the state. Andhra Pradesh is one of the leading three states in the country as far as exports in the sector are concerned. Thank you. ADB board has approved in September 2016 the Vishakhapatnam Chennai Industrial Corridor Development Program, the program about which we are supposed to talk today. This is proposed to complement the government of Andhra Pradesh's efforts in creating economic growth and jobs. It has several components, a multi-trench financing facility, a policy-based loan, a grant under Urban Climate Change Resilience Trust Fund, a technical assistance. The overall annual up is 846 million. ADB's support under the program is multi-sector and quite complex. It's a path-breaking and innovative project which follows a solution-based approach. The whole design has been led by DG Sard with full support from directors and members of various divisions, such as SAUW, which is my division, our director has, is also here. Divisions like transport, SATC, energy, SAEN, skills, SAHS, resident mission, INRM, and the most important, regional cooperation, SARC, director is also here. I would like to sincerely thank and appreciate the efforts of various divisions and departments across the bank for supporting this program. It's great teamwork with effective collaboration among various divisions and departments in ADB. It's truly one ADB in spirit and an in action. On similar lines, we are working with the government, cutting across silos with different departments and agencies in a holistic and integrated manner. The MFF of 715 million is to support infrastructure investment along the corridor. Considering that the overall design of MFF plus PBL plus TA plus grant is quite complex, we have kept the implementation of civil works pretty simple. To give an example, trench one of the MFF has just six civil works procurement packages. Most of these are ICB, more than 40 millions. Detailed project reports, bidding documents, due diligence reports have already been prepared for these packages. Procurement process has been started. And I'm, I'm happy to share that most of the contracts will be awarded by June 2017. We also expect high disbursements by 2017. Contact awards and disbursement are finally the parameters of success of any project. And we are aware of that. We are working on that to ensure that that success parameter is certainly achieved. The PBL, policy-based loan has four components. Number one, establishing and strengthening the corridor management institutions, authorities with their own systems, processes, documents, etc. Number two is to market the state through investor outreach as the most favored destination for potential investors. Number three is skill enhancement for key stakeholders such as workers, entrepreneurs, and students in a gender responsive manner with special focus on women entrepreneurs and workers. And finally, enhancing ease of doing business. As most of us know, India stands at a pathetic 142 out of 189 nations as per the World Bank's 2015 Doing Business Report. In a similar analysis done by the government of India with the World Bank support, the state of Andhra Pradesh has been ranked as number two across various states in the country. ADB can take some credit in helping the state achieve that high rank in doing business. Thankfully, in 2016, with our continuing support, the state has been ranked as number one in ease of doing business. The Chief Minister of the State of Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Naidu, is a very progressive and a dynamic Chief Minister. He expects us to support the state in such a way that it ranks in top 20 if Andhra Pradesh were a sovereign country. ADB is supporting the state to achieve that dream. However, we also realize the state has to 
do a lot in terms of improving its ease of doing business, reforming labor laws, land management systems, and taxation rules and regulations, if it is to benchmark itself with developed countries in Asia like Singapore, Korea, or uh, Malaysia. The corridors plans, regional perspective plan and the conceptual development plan really project uh, major gains. The GDP is expected to increase by six times, manufacturing output by seven times, and jobs five times by 2045. But there's a caveat here. This assumes that the expected infrastructure investments and the policy reforms will get executed as planned. Yeah. So what are the lessons, good practices, and way forward? First, the state of Andhra Pradesh is truly implementing Make in India. The pictures on this slide are from a recently established Isuzu plant in Sri City, which is a private sector developed industrial park, state-of-the-art industrial park, employing more than 20,000 workers and 5 billion worth of investments in manufacturing in that industrial park. It, the Andhra Pradesh state is on its way to become the most favored destination for potential investors. ADB's support for analytical work and reforms has helped the state achieve reasonably well on doing business uh, index. It has also helped the corridor VCIC surge ahead of other corridors in Diamond Pentagon. Some of the corridors started seven years, eight years back, but VCIC, we have gone up to infrastructure investments and contracts awarded, work started on ground. The other corridors are still in planning phase. Looking forward, we want to engage with the state government and the government of India for a national policy on corridor management. As far as the program is concerned, our lesson is that infrastructure investment and policy reform combination creates the right synergies. The geographical focus of clusters, nodes, and corridor generates the right kind of ecosystem. Advanced preparation in terms of detailed project reports, bidding documents, and procurement systems help readiness for implementation. Looking forward, we have already planned next steps for taking up a skills project or a dedicated freight corridor. We have people from our uh, colleagues from skills and transport and energy division also here. And most likely a second phase of VCICDP. Finally, India needs to overcome the current trauma of the demographic burden. We firmly believe infrastructure investments and policy reforms can convert the trauma to traum, which is dream in German, by creating jobs and sustaining economic growth. India needs to realize its dynamism so that my friends back home in Bikane can find decent jobs. Thank you very much. Thanks for your kind attention. Thank you, Manoj. It's very good. Uh, I just wonder what you think is a key thing to make this uh, um, project works. Thank you. The most important component is the potential investors coming to the state and putting in their money for manufacturing. We can lay out the stays do the infrastructure investments, create the enabling environment through policies, but if there are no investors, then the jobs will not be created, the economy will not grow. So to me, investor outreach, calling them to the state in a proactive manner, and asking them to invest in the state is the most critical thing. Pretty. Thank you, Manoj. This is an excellent presentation and also, you know, the scale at which you're working in a large country and I can understand uh, 
the constraints and, and the environment in which you have developed the project. So congratulations to you and the team. My only question to you is, uh, you, you just mentioned about you know, getting the investors to come. And in the true spirit of 1ADB, to what extent are you talking to the private sector group and to OPP? Because your policy-based loan should, should create that environment for private sector investments. And the infrastructure that you're helping prepare is, is also, as you say, making you know, Andhra Pradesh go to, to number one in uh, doing business. So you know, the proof of the pudding would be to get our private sector also interested in making these investments. So uh, to what extent are those linkages being created? That's a very important question. I would like to start by saying that uh, the state government is proactively approaching investors both uh, within the country and outside. In fact, ADB has helped through our colleagues in different divisions who have worked in countries like Japan, Korea, uh, and China in investor outreach through agencies like Kotra. We have a colleague who worked in the finance departments. He was sitting here, I know. He helped us in investor outreach through Kotra. We also have a colleague who worked in uh, Japanese government earlier. So through him, we approach Jetro and Chinese investors. That's the investor outreach part with help from the uh, government and ADB. In addition to that, the state government also feels that India is a huge market. So domestic investors are equally welcome. And when the Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi says make in India, he is calling both the domestic investors and foreign investors to come and invest in the country. Of all the states uh, in the country, our assessment is that Andhra Pradesh is likely to become the most favored destination. Primarily because of enabling environment, policy reforms, a proactive approach in attracting investors. So uh, looking forward, I don't see too much of a constraint as far as Andhra Pradesh is concerned. Make in India, if it is going to be successful, it will be in Andhra Pradesh. Next question. OK, Francis. Thank you. Uh, very well presented and very summar summarized very well. The, the first question I have is that in, in determining this corridor, I remember sort of when they were looking at it, there were a couple of other corridors as well that were looked at. What were the advantages of this particular corridor over the others that actually made this be the one to be chosen by ADB as well as the state and the federal government one? The two is that um, much of the emphasis here aims to the manufacturing sectors largely, but there are looking at uh, India as a whole, I mean, there is a huge agricultural sector that is there, there is a service sector that is growing as well. Are there plans to bring them on board? And the third, just to sort of tie with this, is that when you talk of infrastructure, are we just purely, uh, a, a general feeling is that most of us tend to think of infrastructure from a transport a road point of view as well as the energy point of view, but um, uh, are there from the I, the airports and the port, other port uh, infrastructures, are they part of this infrastructure uh, plan? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the most important criteria for ADB to select this corridor was its uh, long coastline of more than 800 kilometers and strategically located ports all along the corridor. This will help integration of the state economy with regional value chains and global production networks in Southeast Asia and East Asia. Just to give an example, the port of Krishna Patnam is poised to become Shenzhen of India. This port has a deep draft of 22 meter where the biggest vessels can dock. It has 8,000 acres of available land in its hinterland. It can cater to 20 million TEU. 20 feet equivalent units of containerized cargo over the period of next uh, decade. Such is the potential of ports along this corridor. ADB selected this corridor, VCIC and ECEC, with specific emphasis on port-led growth. That was the main criteria. 
As far as the agriculture is concerned, I can tell you my experience. I worked in agriculture sector for four years in, in the government of India. With that experience, I can say that while agriculture is absolutely necessary for sustaining two-third of population in, in a country like India, it cannot be engines of cannot become an engine of growth. This has to come from manufacturing or services. I can see the share of agriculture in GDP decreasing from 28% to 18% over the last two decades. This share is going to go down further as is the case in most developed countries in the world. Services has now hit a ceiling. 55% contribution to GDP, it can go to 60% or 65%, but the incremental growth due to economies of scale are going to be much less. Manufacturing, which is at a low level of 15%, it's easier to have incremental growth in that contribution. No country in the world of the size of India can straight away transform from agriculture, agrarian economy to services without going through the manufacturing phase. Small countries, it's possible. For a country of the size of India, it has to go through agriculture, manufacturing and services. Somehow in the last two decades, India tried to jump that gun by reaching directly from agriculture to services and then realized that no, that's not the right policy. The share of manufacturing in employment and GDP has stagnated over the last two decades. That's why the call for Make in India uh, in the country by our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi. Uh, I hope I have answered your questions. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, just wanted to uh, mention that, you know, no doubt Andhra Pradesh is one of the leading states, but it is also the most cyclone prone state. Now, it's important to look at the challenges which you very briefly mentioned, especially around land, the issue of disasters and frequent disasters, the issue of institutional coordination, cross-sectoral working. I think you would have really elaborated on some of those challenges that we are really going to face in terms of implementation of this program. Thank you. That's just an observation. That's Thank a you. very good point. Under this program, we have a grant from UCCRTF and thanks for approving that grant. You are the person who supported us in that. <laughs> Urban Climate Change Resilience Trust Fund is uh, monitored by Virinda. So under that grant, the most vulnerable city of Vishakhapatnam will develop its climate change resilience strategy, disaster mitigation plan. And in the new project, we'll also have investments to support the overall strategic climate change resilience plans. Thank you.